Okay, welcome back everybody to the next video on our WOW Fishing Bot. I'm really excited because today we're going to start doing some of the automation, some of the fun stuff. Um, before we get started, I just want to fix a couple of things. There's a small bug in our program. Maybe you've already caught it. If you caught it, then kudos to you. Um, you'll notice that when we did this while loop, uh, we were getting uh, invalid input when we were hitting our S key to start our agent up. And that's obviously a valid input. So um, I was looking at that and the root of the bug is we have if, 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 if else. So it's looking at this if else. So if I choose a valid input like S or Z or F, it's always gonna trigger this else, which we don't want. So what we really need here is if ellipse or else, you know, else if statements so that this becomes one execution and save that and run that and that should fix that bug that we had so you can see it says thread started and we don't have that error anymore so if you already caught that then nice work so that bug is fixed and then the other thing that we really should do is when we quit this program we really should if we have any windows open we should destroy all the windows for CEV just for a little bit of a cleaner shutdown so Let's run that so you can see now if I run the agent, I get my window going. And uh, if I do a Q, get a nice clean shutdown. So with that out of the way, that's just some housekeeping stuff. Um, we can move on to some more interesting fun stuff. So the first thing I want to I want to do is I want to quickly explain how phishing works and wow, you probably know this if you're watching this video, but just a one second introduction, a, a user will click They'll either click the fishing button down here that with the one key or they'll click it with the mouse. It'll start fishing. It'll spawn this bobber. And this bobber will sit there and bounce a little bit. It'll move very slowly um, in the water. And then it's kind of randomized. So there's this timer that goes on and it's just random. And at some point in that timer, a fish is going to bite. It's going to shake the bo uh, bobber. It's going to cause a splash sound. And that's your cue is the player to right click on that to catch a fish. If you're too early, it's not going to work. So if you're constantly spamming it, it won't work. And if you're too late, it's not going to work. So it's kind of designed so that it can avoid exploitation. It requires a person actually playing, actually watching it. And when it bobs, you click it. So that's why we want to use an AI that's going to play like a person. It's going to watch that bobber and it's going to make a decision when that fish bites and click it. So that's our goal. So, our, so the goal for today's lesson is first we're going to um, learn how to find this bobber on the screen. How, do we, how does the agent know where it is? How are we going to search for it? Um, and then the other thing that we, we want to learn today is we want to learn how to move the mouse around because eventually we want to be able to put the mouse right on the bobber and click it. So with that out of the way, I'm going to close this window. We're going to um, create a new folder inside of the folder that we're working in. Um, we're gonna call this fishing. So this is gonna be our fish, you can kind of think of this as the fishing module. And inside of this fishing module, let's create a new file called fishing underscore agent dot pi. This is gonna be our fishing AI. And inside of that fishing folder, let's create a subfolder called assets. Okay, so what we're gonna do is inside of this assets folder, we want to um, have a, um, a target. We want to have the target for what our AI is going to be looking for. So if you go to my GitHub repository, you can download the entire co uh, code. And inside of the source folder, the phishing folder, there's a folder assets, just like we set up now. And then there's phishing target PNG. So grab that. That's what, what, what you're going to want. Alternatively, if you want to, you're welcome to experiment and try uh, to make your own. So let me just show you where that where this asset came from. So it's not from this image, but you can, you'll get the idea. So here's our bobber, and what we're looking for when we are finding a target is it's it's just like the human eye in a in a way. We want to be able to find it from. It's got to be unique enough that we can see it. So imagine all these all this green you know, this green stuff on, on the water. If I had an icon that looked like that, it would be very hard for even a human to find that because it's so similar. So 
we want to we want our target to be something that's unique enough so that we can we can identify it and if it's too unique it's it might be very hard for the ai to find it if it's if it's very very special and it and it's not consistent that can be difficult for the ai agent to find if it's too general so let's say we just chose um, red pixels so looking at this asset let's say i didn't choose any of this blue stuff i just chose maybe from the bottom right hand corner, some red pixels. That's also gonna be hard because the AI might pick some of these other skills that are on the screen to click. It might get confused by that. So why, how did I choose this target? Well, there's a little bit of art and science, I guess, involved, but it's mostly art. Um, we're looking for something that's unique. We're looking for something that's consistent uh, like I said, and something that the agent's going to be able to find. So one of the things that's nice about the fishing bobber is that every time you spawn it, it's going to have these feathers. And they're pretty much in the same location. They're in the same orientation and all that. And they also have a pretty unique, they have a very, first of all, they have a very consistent color. So there's blue and red. They're pretty consistent. And it has a very uh, consistent pattern with this angle. So I took a slice out of that. So I just have maybe 20 by 40 pixels or something like that, a pretty small image. And that's going to be enough for our AI to hone right in on this spot. Just like the human eye, if you were looking for those feathers, you can hone right in on it. And you don't get confused by the red of this, you know, bestial wrath skill down here. You're not just looking for the anything that's red on the screen. You're looking for those feathers. And that's what we're trying to emulate here. Okay. So that's the target. So make sure you have the target in fish in the assets folder. Okay. So now um, we're gonna we're gonna do some uh, some basic setup in our phishingagent.py. So in phishingagent.py, we're gonna have to import some modules. We're gonna import CV2, which is our OpenCV library again, um, NumPy. And now we're gonna import a new library that we haven't used yet. And this is where some of the automation is gonna start start coming in. There's a library called PyAutoGUI. So again, if you haven't installed this, you're going to have to make sure that this is installed either on your system or on your virtual environment. And to do that, you're going to, want to do pip install PyAutoGUI. So make sure you have PyAutoGUI installed. Mine's already installed. And what PyAutoGUI does is it's a you can Google it and find the docs. It's a it's a pretty simple application. It lets you <clears throat> send keystrokes, move the mouse. Um, it even has its own screenshot library, which I think actually encapsulates um, Pill that we used. Um, I actually tried that in place of Pill from a speed perspective, but I found that the image grab was a lot faster. So that's why we've implemented that. But you're welcome to play with PyGUI, PyAutoGUI, um, you know, looking at the screenshot functions. PyAutoGUI, even has a function that um, can be used to find um, targets on a screen, kind of like what we're doing. But I think what you'll find is that that's a lot slower than what we're doing, and that's a problem. We want we, we need performance. So the method that they're using is probably not as robust, but it's very simple and easy to do. So if you had an application that wasn't very time sensitive and it was like, okay, I just want to write a, an application that's going to click this button every you know 60 seconds. You could do that in a couple lines of code in PyAutoGUI uh, Py and be done. But when it comes to something like a bot where we need performance, then I found that that's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so in our, in our phishing agent, this is where we're going to create a class called phishing agent. And we're going to uh, create the init function here. And what we want to do is when we, in, when we instantiate um, this agent, we want to associate it with our main agent. So we're going to pass. So when we construct this this uh, item, when we instantiate it, we're not just going to. We're going to actually have to pass in main agent, and we're going to we're going to set self dot main agent as the main agent. Okay. Okay. Next, we want to load in our phishing target. So we have this PNG file here. We need to load this in because the agent's got to know what it's trying to find. So we're going to do that right now. So self dot target, and we're going to use 
a function. I don't think we've used this yet. I forgot, but cv.imread. So this is the uh, in the OpenCV library. This is how you read in an image. And what I'm going to do is just to save time and, and make it simple, I'm just going to copy the absolute path. Um, you don't have to do it this way. You could use um, relative path and, and however you want to do it. But I'm I'm just using the absolute path, so it takes one variable out while we're kind of going through this tutorial just to save time. Okay, so now I have a uh, I have loaded in. So when I initialize this agent, my phishing agent, it's gonna um, it's gonna have a connection to my main agent, so I can access that stuff, and also it's gonna immediately load in the target. Okay, and then let's let's just create another placeholder here. Self dot phishing thread equals none. We'll just put that in there. Okay, so now let's think about everything that we want our phishing agent to do. If I go back to here, it's going to have to click, either click click this or press a button. And I think pressing buttons is actually a little bit more, you know, uh, it's a little bit easier to press a button and guarantee the outcome than it is to click the mouse. There's a little less variation there. So we're going to we're going to we're going to assume that the user has the phishing on the one button. So we're going to we're going to have it um, cast by pressing a button. It's going to so so let's think about this just from a human. The first thing we're going to have to do is let's just go through our functions. First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cast. So the first thing a, a person would do is they would cast the lure. So we're going to need a function to do that. We're going to need a, a function to find the lure. So after we cast it, you know, we would have to look around the screen and figure out, okay, where is that lure? We're going to need a function where we actually move the mouse to the lure. So after we after we see it on the screen, we have to move our mouse to it, okay? And then after after we do that, while this thing is fishing, we, we have to sit there and wait and watch it. So we actually need a function that I'm going to call watch lure, which is us, you know, us or the agent is just sitting there watching the lure, waiting for a bite. So we're going to have to do that and treat that as an activity. Okay. Then when a bite happens or either the bite happens or the fishing goes so long that nothing, there's no bites, we're going to have to go to the next step. So we'll call that pull line. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just at the end of this, I'm going to define a function that I'm going to call run. And run is basically going to be my way to start this whole agent up so that I don't have to think about, okay, should I start with a cast or we're going to define a, we're going to, we're just going to call, call a dot run. And that's going to, you know, start all of our loops and whatnot, our processes and, and, and do these actions later. So this is kind of the overall structure of our agent. And, and you can kind of think of it as a person. We have our agent, he's got a target, he's going to have access to the screen, and we're going to have to teach him how he can cast, how he can find the lure, how's he going to move to it, how's he going to watch it and know when, you know, a bite happens. And finally, he's going to have to pull the line for us and then probably do it again. So that's, that's the overall structure of the phishing agent. Okay, let's start with, I guess it's probably the easiest thing to do, which is casting. So right at the beginning here, we have our cast lure function. So what we're going to do is this is going to be our first time using pi auto GUI. So let's notify the user that the agent is casting just with a, with a printout. So casting, and we're going to, assume that we want the agent to again press the one key so the one key is gonna is gonna cast it's not gonna have to find that so that's super easy with pi auto GUI um, we're going to just simply call the command pi auto GUI dot press and then one so not purse press so press is basically going to simulate a keystroke, a, a button press down and up. You could also do pi auto GUI dot uh, typewrite, like uh, hello world. And this, this would actually type out a whole string. 
So there's different ways to do keys. You can do holds, you can do, so if I did pi auto GUI dot um, key down one, this would actually hold the one key down until I said pi auto GUI dot key up. So, so if you think about it, key down, key up is the same as key press. But this is usually used for if I want, let's say I wanted to do shift. I might do shift and I might wanna do, you know, press one. So if I want the, the input to be a, um, uh, an exclamation point, which is a shift one on most keyboards, this is one way you could do that. So you're gonna hold down the shift key, press the one key, and then release the shift key. So you can imagine all the different types of combinations and ways that you could use these um, bindings to control the keyboard. So in our case, we're just gonna press the one key and start, and that will start casting in World of Warcraft. So it's super easy. So we're gonna do pi auto, G, pi auto GUI dot press one. So that's gonna, that's gonna um, start fishing. Now, we don't, now if you think, now, now I know you can't really see the game right now, so hopefully you've had some experience with the game. If not, when you press the one key, this won't spawn instantly. It's gonna take a second to two seconds, probably between the server, the internet, etc. So what we don't want is the agent to cast and then immediately try to start finding the lure and, and get all you know goofed up. So it's also good to try to treat this like a human. So you put in a little bit of delay. So let's also import time. And let's do um, time.sleep. And let's, let's let this thing slip, sleep for three seconds. So now you could, let's do two seconds. So you're gonna press one and then it's gonna just chill out for two seconds. And then after that, we want to call find lure. This is, this is essentially going to be a progression. You can think of it as a progression. We're going to cast, find, move, watch, pull, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty nice uh, design. So we're going to call self dot find lure. So make sure since these are all uh, class functions, make sure we're passing self into here. Guess I got carried away thinking about the uh, layout. So, okay, so we need to uh, make sure that we pass self into all these, um, you know, class functions. And now um, we're gonna cast, we're gonna press the one button, we're gonna let the agent chill out for two seconds, and then we're gonna cat, uh, find the lure. Okay, so it's gonna go from here to here now. So. This is pretty much done actually. So our cast lure function for all intents and purposes is 100% complete. This is ready for ready to go. And why don't we test this out? So let's let's just currently let's define run as self.cast just for now. Why don't we do this? While true. self.cast lure and then we'll do a, a sleep so time.sleep let's do a five we'll do a five second delay so this thing isn't spinning out of control so this is just gonna call this casting you know over and over again every five seconds but what we can do is we can actually watch in the terminal it's gonna say casting and then you're gonna see actually the computer is actually gonna press the one key and it's gonna actually register as an entry so let's let's try this out Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. We have to actually set this up. So, sorry. We'll do if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main. We'll do, uh, we got to create an instance of this. So we're going to say phishing agent equals phishing agent. And then we're going to start it. All right. There we go. So now let's run this. Now oh, let's see here. Oh, we need a main agent. So we can actually just for 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 our current purposes, we can just define it as none. It's not going to it's not currently being called. All right. So now 
you see that? So it pressed the one key. It actually, if you watch right here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pressing the one key every five seconds. So you can see that the agent is now, it's, we've, got, we've got the first part of our fishing ready to go. It's uh, telling us it's casting and it's actually pressing the one button and it's going to register in whatever program we got open at that time. So that's pretty good. So let's kill it. Okay, so now we're going to get to the find a lure portion. So um, this is where things are going to start to get pretty interesting. So we need to find the lure on the screenshot. And in this case, I have an example screenshot. We have to find that. So how are we going to do that? So we're bringing in main agent. So we have access to main agent's current image. And if you remember, current image is constantly being updated. So that's going to be the screenshot at any given moment in time. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually run a, uh, a command in OpenCV that's called CV match template. And I will explain what this is going to do visually because I think it'll be a lot more, more clear. So first we'll do, C, uh, we'll do lure location equals cv.match template. And, and the first is we have to put in our image matrix. So this is our haystack. If you want to think of it as searching for a needle in a haystack, our haystack image is going to be our main agent dot current image. And our template, or you can think of it as the needle, that's going to be our uh, self dot fishing target. Let me uh, let me do this so it's a little easier to read. Okay, so we got to bring in self dot fishing target, and then we have to give it a method. So this is where you can actually you know you can look at OpenCV's literature and and do some experimentation. But for today, what we're going to use, what I found to be pretty good for this application is cv.tm underscore c coefficient normed. Okay. So you can take a look at uh, OpenCV's documentation if you want to get a little bit more detail on that. Okay. So you're probably asking yourself, uh, well, what is lure location? Is this just going to be an x, y, you know, axis or something like that? So I think the best way to show you what it is, is to show you visually. So what we're going to do is, uh, this is actually kind of like an image transformation. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a NumPy array so that we can open it up as an image and look at it. So, so if you remember, we're going to do, let's call this the lure uh, location array is going to be equal to mp.array lure location. So all we're doing is converting that to a numpy array. And then the next thing we want to do is um, we want to open up a window. So we'll do cv.imshow. Let's call this um, our match template view. And then we're going to we're going to want to get that numpy array. And if you remember, we're going to want to do a CV dot wait key so that we can we can see it. Otherwise, it will appear and disappear quickly. So let's run this and see what we what we get. Oh, you know what? We we did not bring in our main agent yet, so that's not going to work, is it? So let's uh, go back. We have to bring in our main agent. So let's go back to our main.py. So, so let's do this the other, let's do this the more correct way. So let's do import or let's do from phishing dot phishing agent import phishing agent. So we're gonna we're gonna import the phishing agent file which is located in the phishing folder, we want to bring in our phishing agent to our main.py. And then let's do let's just do this the correct way. And then when we hit F, we want to create a phishing agent. So let's call this phishing agent 
is going to be equal to a fishing agent. And we're going to pass in, but this time we're going to pass in the main agent that we created that's that's running this process. So we're going to we're going to pass in our main agent. Okay? So now this this thing is going to have the correct um, Oh, when that thing was running, it put a one in there too. So be careful. One thing I'll say is be careful when you're playing with uh, Pi Auto GUI. Um, sometimes it's running and it's clicking around and typing stuff in and it can screw up your code if you're not careful. It's not a big deal, but it's just a little annoying. So just watch that. So the phishing agent, uh, we, we've created a phishing agent. We've passed in main, main agent, and then we want to do phishing agent dot run. So so now, so now what we're going to do is we're not going to we're not going to start this up in this file. So this code can stay. It's not going to execute as long as we don't run from this file. If we run from main.py, we're going to hit S. S is going to start our main agent. Then we're going to get hit F, and that's going to spawn our phishing agent. So we're going to do S. Oh, you know what? Let's quit this too. Let's do one more thing. Let's comment out. We don't want to see that window anymore too distracting. So comment out this line of code. We don't want to keep looking at the computer vision. It just it's it's too distracting. So let's run this. Hit S. We should see uh, that thread has started. So that's good. So we know that the agent is seeing the screen even though we're not. Now we're going to hit hit F and it's casting and it pressed the one button. And main agent not defined. All right. What did we goof up here? Oh, okay, sorry. So in find lure, I said main agent dot current image and that's not correct. It needs to be self dot main agent because we're storing that in self dot main agent. Okay, so that's our problem. So let's try it again. I apologize for the bugs, but I like to do it just like I would normally do it myself. So you guys are gonna get bugs and all. So S, so the thread is started, so our agent is running. Let's hit F, let's start our phishing agent. Casting, all right. Now hit a key, okay. So this is our match template. Now this is gonna look really, really strange, but let me explain what it is we're seeing, and we're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get it to, to, to show you what a hit looks like. But basically what this is, is you can think of this as almost like a heat map through the computer's eyes. The darker the color, the less likely it is to be the thing we're looking for. The brighter the color, the more likely, the closer of a match it is to our template. And you can see that almost everything on the screen is, is, is black, which means absolutely not a match. And then there's some stuff that's dark gray. This is not a very strong match. You'll, I'll try to show you what a strong match looks like in a moment. But that's what it's doing is that Imagine you're looking through the eyes of the computer. Everything that's dark is basically not what we're looking for. We're looking for a bright spot on this picture. And if we see one bright spot, that's a hit. That's what we're looking for. If this was an application where, in the, the case of the fishing bobber, we're only going to have one. But this would work for a game that had, for example, a field with lots of different things in it or different people running around you would see bright spots everywhere that you have a hit. So that's how this is going to look. So let's try this again. So let's let's hit Q and let's let's close the steel or let's uh let's kill this. You might have to hard kill it because we haven't really finished the the coding properly yet. So hard kill that um, and then let's let me see if I can uh, get the bobber on the screen while we're while this is running. All right, so we're going to do S, we're going to do F, put this on the screen. Let's see what we get. Well, let's see here. Might have needed more time for this to run. 
might not have fully started up the thread and, and loaded the image in yet, so you might have to put a delay between starting and starting the phishing agent. All right, let's try this again. All right, so let me hit the match template now. Hit a key. All right, perfect. So now what you're seeing here is the screenshot. And if you look, there's a very bright spot right here. And what that what this is going to tell the computer is that in this image, everywhere there's a bright spot, that's most likely what we're looking for. So if we if we compare this with our image, remember what our remember our target is that red and blue. You see we have the blue here, so there's a little bit of a hit here, so that kind of makes sense. Here we've got some red stuff going on, that kind of makes sense. Um, the bobber, of course, that's that's the brightest spot, which is what we want. That's the brightest spot, so that tells the computer that most likely what it's looking for is right here in the water. The water's nice and dark, that's what we want. And then there's a few other bright spots, so like the... Uh, like down here, there's a little, you know, it's kind of bright. It's not real bright, but just to give you an idea, it's pinging on this question mark. And that kind of makes sense because it's kind of a reddish color. So so this is not a all or nothing thing. It's kind of a scale from zero to one. And zero meaning the farthest away, the least likely, just pure black. And 100% would be a match. One would be a match. And it's unusual that you're going to get every time one for one match. So... Um, so the way that this can be applied is we can either just try to find the, the best match, the number one match. We can take the maximum of this picture. And if we do that, it's going to be here because this is definitely going to be the maximum, the brightest spot. Another way is, like I said, if you were playing a game and you had multiple objects on the screen, you could set a threshold and you could say um, anything above, let's say, 80 percent, I'm going to consider that a hit. And if you look at this, you might, these white spots, like just pretending that these white spots are all what you're looking for, these might all correspond to the hits. So if you were trying to hit this object, you might see one, two, three, four, these would all be hits. And you would just have to choose the appropriate threshold. So that's how the computer is going to look at this. It's gonna take that image, it's gonna convert it into this transformation, and it's gonna look, look for the bright spots and it's going to make a determination, depending on what you tell it, on how to, how to proceed. If you just want to find the maximum, the best spot, which is what we want to do, because there's only going to be one fishing bobber. So we're going to hope that if, we're, if everything is right, the best match should be the real bobber. Or we could program it so that it says anything above a certain number of threshold we want to treat as a hit. And in that case, you might have boom, 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 boom. And that might make sense for a different type of game or a different type of application. So um, if we were to, well, I guess I don't have any icons on here that show up more than once, but if, you know, for example, if you're familiar again with the game, if you had an, an icon here and an icon here that were the same and we were to template match that, you would see in this image two very bright spots because those are, the, those are gonna both match. So that's how it's gonna work. So it looks like our template is working. You can see visually that absolutely the brightest spot on the image is right here, that's the bobber. We have a very dark area around the water. Um, another optimization that we, we're not gonna do that I haven't done that could be done is when you're fishing, you might, wanna, you might wanna set a rule that you can't look outside of this box because you're never, your bobber is never gonna be where your menu is. So that's another way. And if you imagine we put a box here and encoded in that logic, you would see how strong this is, is starting to get. It's, it's getting to where the computer can just immediately recognize where that bobber is. So this is really cool stuff. All right, so let's um, kill this application. Again, I got to hard kill it on my end because of the way we programmed it. So. I think I'm going to end the video here because this is a lot. Um, in the next video, we're going to go to the next step where we're going to um, actually tell, we're going to find that maximum spot. We're going to move the mouse to it. So um, I think this is a good spot to end though. So, so, so take a look at this video a couple times and play with PyAuto GUI. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with PyAuto GUI. And take a look at the OpenCV document, documentation if you're interested. Try to understand what we're doing here with the CV. Uh, this match template. Very cool stuff. Um, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.